Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Scott Schell and I'm a specialist in the Germanic languages. I have a bachelor's degree in German, a master's degree in linguistics, and a PhD in Germanic linguistics. And today what I wanted to do was actually go ahead and start a sub-series on this channel, something along the lines of like Old Saxon personal names or appellations that you could adopt. Um, I have done quite a bit of research uh, regarding Old Saxon names and where they are attested. Um, so I'm actually not even going to be referencing the Halion a lot. Uh, instead, I'm going to be referencing uh, something called the Old Saxon speech areas, in which case a lot of these names were discovered. Uh, sometimes they were just written on like, you know, the margins of a book or perhaps the church had, um, you know, recorded these names uh, once the churches were erected uh, in northern Germany or even Fulda for that matter. Um, but you know, what we can actually get out of this are like these, these spellings of the old Saxon names and kind of get away from that Scandinavian tradition where it's like, you know, the heathen would like to, you know, go ahead and adopt, you know, a name. And, uh, you see this a lot, right? Where they adopt like Freya or even Thor, or they might even adopt something like Thor Grimm, um, which, uh, is, you know, borrowed from the Scandinavian tradition. Um, and they are very much into these sort of heathen traditions. And so what I wanted to go ahead and start doing is bringing you information on how to adopt a continental Saxon uh, name, if you wish. So I've been able to actually compile about 125 different names that are found in the Old Saxon speech area. So, you know, I'm not only going to give you, you know, just a handful here. I'm going to give you quite a bit that you can choose from. And the problem with finding these, these names in these, these documents is that there is spelling variation everywhere because there wasn't really a standard for Old Saxon. You know, not taking the Halion into consideration. Outside of the Halion, there really wasn't a standard or any consistent way to spell these names. And so uh, these names that I'm going to give you have all kinds of different variations. And what I'm going to do is give you the attested form of the name and then I am going to go ahead and standardize that name to the Halion itself, and then actually give you the name in runes. So uh, I do believe that the Saxons would have used the Elder Futhark system, even uh, if their rune system was contemporaneous with the Halion. Uh, it just doesn't really make sense for the Saxons to have to innovate a new system like they had to in the Old English system and in the Old Norse system, because you had all of these different sounds coming into the language. Uh, in Old Norse from Proto-Germanic or into Old English from uh, Proto-Germanic as well. And so if you look at the Old Saxon system, if you look at the Old Saxon language rather, you'll see that the language itself does not differ too much from Proto-Germanic. So um, in a nutshell, I do believe that the Saxons would have used the Elder Futhark system. And so when I write these names in runes for you, I'm going to be using the Elder Futhark system. So what I wanted to do is uh, go ahead and give you 10 names today, and I will go ahead and give you 10 additional names every video uh, that deals with this sub-series. And so, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and give you the attested form, if you would like to just adopt the attested form. And then I will go ahead and give you the standardized Halion form, in which case I've had to most of the time reconstruct and then give them to you in runes. I will then give you a literal translation and then maybe some comments uh, regarding what these names mean. And one final note here too, is that the names that I'm using all date to, it, they date to at least before the year 1000. So they are very old names and they could be classified as Old Saxon. All right, everyone, so what I wanted to do now was go ahead and go through this list with you all. Um, I'm only going to give you the first 10 names of the 125 that I am going to provide to you throughout this sub-series. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in. The first one that I have for you is Alfdach. Alfdach. As you can see, the attested form is spelled a little bit differently. Um, that is, of course, because there was no standard way to spell this name at the time. Um, but if we did standardize that to the Halion dialect, it would have just simply been Alf Dach, Alf Dach, in which case means literally 
um, Elf Day, and this is a name specifically meant for men. It is attested that way. It's actually attested as a masculine name. Uh, the next name that I wanted to go ahead and provide to you is Alfburg. Alfburg. In which case, this is a name that is meant for a female. It is attested as a feminine name. And the literal translation of this name is literally Elf Stronghold or something like uh, Elf Hillfort, if you will. Uh, let's look at the next one. We have Arn Wolf. Arn Wolf. In which case, this literally means eagle as in Arn and then Wolf as in Wolf. Uh, this name is specifically meant for men as well uh, in its attestations. The next name that we have on this list is Osburg. Osburg, in which case literally means god as in like a pagan god. It's related to the rune name Ansus, for example. Um, and Burk is again that feminine uh, name. So you have Osburg, meaning like god, stronghold, and it is meant specifically for women. The next name that I wanted to give you is Osger. Osger. And again, this Os is related to Ansus, as in a pagan god. And this literally means um, pagan god. And then uh, Yer means spear. So it's like god spear. Uh, the gender is not recorded uh, in this attestation, but Yer is historically masculine, so I'm going to go ahead and say that this was a name that was specifically meant for men. The next name that I wanted to give you is Alfrat. Alfrat. This is literally like Elf Reed or Elf Council. Um, the attested name here is actually male, but the Rat can actually mean either gender. So a woman could have this name, or a man could adopt this name. It doesn't matter. It was sort of uh, neutral. Um, the next name is that, that I'm going to give you is Alfric. Alfric, in which case uh, is literally elf as in alf, and rik as in ruler. So this is male, right? This is a masculine name. Uh, the next one that I wanted to give you is Arngot. Arngot. So we have eagle as in Arn, and then Gott is actually uh, goth. It's actually eagle goth in this particular uh, attestation. So we have two more. One is the, the, the penultimate one here is Osman, in which case uh, you have Os as in Ansus again. You have that pagan god connotation. And then you have Mon, in which case is man. So the gender is not specifically mentioned here in the attestation, but historically this word uh, man has been grammatically masculine uh, throughout you know, historical linguistics, so it's probably just used specifically for a man. Um, and I'm only sort of explaining it that way because the word man, um, in histor historically speaking, could actually be used for either gender, but in this case it does seem like it was actually used specifically for a man. And the last one that I have for you here is Osk Rik. Osk Rik. So it's literally Osk as in Ash and Rik as in like ruler. So you have the Ash ruler. And uh, this gender is actually not specified in the corpus. Um, this particular one, anyway, this particular compound name. But the other names that are compounded with Rik are overwhelmingly masculine. So this is, I could say with 99% certainty, that this would have been a name for a man. Okay, so those are the, the 10 names that I have for you uh, in this video. Uh, I'll go ahead and go over them again real fast. So you have a list right here to look at, and you don't have to keep flipping through the, or the video. So we have Alfdak, Alfburg, Arnwulf, Osburg, Osjer, Alfrat, Alfrik, Argot, Osman, and, <clears throat> and Oskrik. Okay, well, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Um, you know, again, it's, it's, I'm sort of creating these names and reconstructing them into the Halion dialect, uh, you know, with runes and everything in hopes that uh, the heathen community uh, will, or just anybody interested in this sort of stuff, will want to 
adopt these names instead of always going to the Scandinavian counterparts and adopting things like, you know, Freya or Thor or, uh, you know, Grim or Grim, Grimir or, or some sort of like anglicized, you know, version of Grimnir's name or Grim's name. Um, you understand what I'm saying, though. So it's going to help us have more choice, right? Instead of constantly relying on the Scandinavian tradition, if we want to borrow one of these names, um, we now have attestations that we can use um, in the old Saxon corpus. So again, these are only 10 names out of the 125 that I have ready for you. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of release these piecemeal um, so we can go ahead and have a discussion about these names. Uh, if you have any questions or comments on, on any of them, you know, just go ahead and leave a comment below. I will, you know, as you can tell in my previous videos, I more than likely will respond to you if I have time. Uh, yeah, so go ahead and just like the video, subscribe, share it. And, um, you know, I'd love to hear all of your opinions on this sort of, you know, direction, at least with this sub-series is uh, concerned with. So, all right, I will see you all soon. Take care.